Welcome, everybody. I'm David McIntosh. I'm the co-founder and head of Tenor, a GIF search engine, an expression search engine uh, that Google acquired last year. Now, to start off, I'd like to tell you a personal story about how I use GIFs. Uh, a couple months ago, my brother flew up to San Francisco to stay with me for the weekend. And he doesn't fly into town all that often, so I, I really splurged and picked up a, a really nice steak at a, a local place in San Francisco. And as he was texting the plane, uh, boarding the plane, uh, I texted him and, and let him know that I had picked up that really nice steak that he had been eyeing the last time he was in town. And he sent me uh, this GIF that you can see on the right here. Yes, uh, I could imagine him cheering to himself as he boarded the plane. Uh, it brought me back to the days we were growing up as kids watching Bill Nye together. I could see what he was saying. When you think about it, we're all inherently visual creatures. Our memories aren't static, lifeless text, but rather moving visual scenes like the one that you see on the right. GIFs are inherently a more authentic, a more human way to communicate. And the gift my brother sent me is just one example of the many visual messages that are sent every single day. In the last four and a half years since Tenor launched, visual communication has exploded in popularity and usage. Tenor receives hundreds of millions of queries per day across hundreds of millions of users from people searching for a more visual way to express themselves. Underlying this dramatic growth of visual communication is the explosion of mobile messaging. We're all sending more messages than ever, and we're looking for a way to go beyond words to express ourselves. It's difficult to express ourselves over text alone. It has a lot of limitations. The QWERTY keyboard was originally designed for the desktop computer, and it's a challenging input surface on mobile phones. It's cumbersome to type a long message, and it's very easy to be misunderstood over text. And so in the words of one of Tenor users, I'm bad with words over text, but I'm good with GIFs. GIFs help us bond with friends and family over shared moments. That creates a deeper connection, a deeper understanding. Some people tell us they've even created personal visual languages with GIFs from movies or TV shows that they grew up watching together. GIFs help us communicate more accurately, more precisely. They translate that thought, that feeling, that emotion at the back of our head into a visual object that helps us communicate exactly what's on our mind. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about Tenor. Tenor is a GIF search engine. It's an expression search engine that helps people find the perfect GIF. Some of our most popular searches are queries like happy, smile, good morning, happy birthday. These aren't information-seeking queries. These are expression-seeking queries. You may have used Tenor's GIF keyboard, and Tenor also powers GIF search in popular communication and messaging apps, everything from Facebook to Twitter to WhatsApp uh, to Samsung keyboard and, and many, many more. Tenor's focus is helping people find the right GIF to express exactly what's on their mind. And that's because our users tell us we're fundamentally competing against them typing text or perhaps saying nothing at all. If you think about it, you're in a conversation. You want to respond to somebody. You have seconds to react before the conversation moves on. Uh, and so if you can't find the right way to quickly say what's on your mind, you just may say nothing at all. As a result, expression search relevance is a key driver of the underlying growth of visual communication. And as search quality has been steadily improving, especially with our focus on localization, we're seeing dramatic growth around the world. Now, let me tell you a little bit about how people are using Tenor. And I actually have a challenge for the audience. This graph is showing normalized queries for a particular mystery query on Tenor. And you can see that it peaks on Fridays and Saturdays, and then it dramatically dips throughout the rest of the week. Um, for those of you who guessed that this was party, you had it absolutely right. Uh, what people are doing is they're going out Friday and Saturday, and they're making plans. They're telling people what they're up to. Um, and of course, most of us probably don't go to a, a traditional search engine and just type party. But that's exactly what we're doing in an expression search engine. Rather than looking for answers or information. We're looking for a way to communicate a point. Here's another great example. Uh, this shows uh, a typical Sunday in yellow and Super Bowl Sunday. And what's really amazing about this uh, is you can see that the, one, the spikes in tenor usage correspond almost one-to-one -one with key moments in the game. 
the kickoff, a score, a touchdown, and ultimately the end of the game. And, and what's really funny is you can see the two different ways that people react to the game. Um, they're either cheering congratulations or they're expressing disappointment about the outcome of the game. And this isn't just a US phenomenon. We see expression search happening across the world. Uh, this plot is showing people searching for good morning. And what's amazing here is it's almost like a wave sweeping across the planet as people are waking up and looking for a delightful way to say good morning to friends and to family. Now, Tenor's expression search engine receives billions of unique queries like these from users looking to explain, exp express the full range of human emotions. Our vision at Tenor is to help every person around the world find the perfect visual way to express themselves. Wherever a user is currently typing and communicating with text, our goal is to offer the ability to effortlessly communicate exactly what's on their mind. And core to that vision is partnering closely with developers like you to make the best expression experience available to your users. I'd like to invite my co-founder, Frank, on stage to walk through several recent use cases, as well as recent Tenor partner integrations. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. Welcome to IO 2019. I'm Frank Nawabi, co-founder of Tenor and head of Tenor's search partnerships at Google. One of the reasons why I love my job is getting to partner and work closely with developers like you from all over the world to launch some really cool, innovative, and impactful integrations. Not all apps are created equal, and each app has their own set of challenges in how best to invoke a GIF experience, from messaging, comments, and posts, to gaming, dating, and even customer service, the need for people to express themselves more clearly and precisely is growing across several different use cases beyond traditional messaging. I'm going to spend the next few minutes sharing some examples of different use cases and how some partners have integrated Tenor into their apps. Picture this. Your new crush just sent you a notification. But OMG, what's the next move? How do you break the ice? Well, sliding into DMs just got a little easier now that you can express yourself in that perfect, clever way. But will it work? Will they respond? In an effort to build meaningful connections, fight ghosting, and change the perception around dating-related chats, Badu, a dating and social discovery app, has introduced a way to let users express themselves using GIFs after you've connected with someone in the app. It's really incredible to see that GIFs get a higher response rate than normal messages sent over Badoo messaging. So fast forward to when you're sharing a laugh with your new crush uh, over a nice dinner. Thanks, GIFs. Whether you're using a mobile device or are on your desktop, Expression search should be a seamless experience. Deciding on the best way to invoke the GIF experience in your app is important because it can play a huge factor in overall usage of the feature. Deciding, for example, Discord, a voice and text app for video gaming communities, first introduced the ability to share GIFs with a slash command integration, which was really popular among power users. As the app grew to over 250 million registered users, so did the usage of GIFs. So the Discord team was thinking, hey, how do we make this feature more discoverable and more easy to use for all of our users? Well, they decided to integrate uh, with a native GIF button. The results are pretty astounding, right? Discord saw 10x growth in GIF send rates from their original slash command after they simply added a native GIF button into their app. As David previously mentioned, visual expression is growing worldwide. And as a result, localization support is critical. From basic language input support to local content, holidays, and even slang, localization is important because it provides users with relevant results and a high quality, of, uh, high quality user experience. 
which leads to increased share rates and frequently more used GIFs. We've seen partners like Zalo, a popular instant messaging app used in Vietnam, implement Expression Search as a core offering to let their users easily search and share GIFs in the native language. What's really cool is after switching to Tenor's API, Zalo saw 20% GIF in uh, send and GIF send rates uh, across their app. With all of these different use cases and ways to integrate Expression Search into your app, I'm excited to introduce Jeff Sinkler, a senior software engineer who leads client development for Tenor products at Google. Jeff is going to walk you through some technical details on how to integrate Tenor, including tips and best practices for a great expression experience. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Jeff Sinkler, and I lead client development for Tenor products here at Google. Today, I'm going to give you some tips on how to build a high-quality expression search experience into your product. Over the last few years, Tenor has gleaned many insights about expression search, and we've built a lot of technology to support the use case and ultimately help developers like you build great expression search experience and allow the user to get the most out of the expression use case. So expression search delights users when it works really well. Finding that perfect GIF that articulates your emotion and sending it to someone feels good not only for the sender, but also for the recipient. And great expression search products make that process really easy. So there are a few principles that are common among great expression search experiences. And those are quickly returning relevant results, inspiring users to search, and helping users navigate the nuances of expression. So let's do a deeper dive and talk about the technology that Tenor has built to help support these principles. So we'll start with quickly returning relevant results. When a user wants to engage in expression search, it's important for the user to be able to find a relevant GIF and to find it quickly. Recall the example that David mentioned earlier, where a user's in the moment and they want to send a GIF. If it takes them too long to do so, they might end up not saying anything at all. For a user in that moment, the key to success is search relevance. Having relevant search means that more accurate results will appear with less browsing, meaning the user will find what they want more quickly. Over the years, Tenor has experimented with various versions of our products, and the insight that we've learned is that users are more likely to share a GIF by searching for specific content versus browsing general categories. And even within those searches, a majority of users share a GIF from the first four to eight results. In other words, the more the user has to scroll through content, the less likely they are to share. We use various signals to refine search results over time, meaning that they change over time, adapt to shifts in trends, and stay relevant to the global consciousness. So ultimately, relevant search makes it easier for the user to find that perfect GIF and cuts down the time that it takes for them to find it. And in the messaging context, that timing is everything. So there are a couple of other ways that great expression search experiences can provide relevant results quickly. And this code sample will help me articulate that. So what we've got here is at the top of this slide, there's an API call that invokes uh, Tenor's search API. And underneath, there's a response structure that's an excerpt of a response that you would get after calling that uh, API. So search responses contain lots of in useful information. But there's one entity in particular that I want to emphasize, and that's the media object. So the media object represents a single asset on Tenor. And when you do a search call, the response will actually contain multiple media objects for each piece of content. And those various media objects represent different file formats. So up until now, we've talked about sharing GIFs. But Tenor actually supports formats beyond the GIF, such as MP4s and WebMs. Tenor also generates smaller versions of those formats. And you can see that in this example here, we have a media object that's called the tiny GIF. The tiny GIF is a smaller version of the original GIF that was uploaded. And we developed this in order to support mobile devices, where users tend to be on 3G connections that can be slow and unreliable. 
the tiny GIF can be up to 80% smaller in file size than the original GIF. So you can imagine how effective that can be for a user on a mobile device trying to download and send an image. So when you're building your products, we encourage you to take advantage of these different file formats and file sizes to provide the best fit for your product, your users, and your use case. So the second principle that we talked about was inspiring users to search. Being inspired to search can be a challenge for users because expression search is complex, knowing exactly what to search for can be difficult, and having awareness around the variety of content that's available has to be learned by a user. We can't expect somebody to come into an expression search experience and know exactly what to search for. So we use trending GIFs and categories to help with that problem. They serve as gateways into the search use case. So trending GIFs is essentially a stream of content where the query is popular, shareable GIFs. You tend to see a variety of different things in trending, such as different visual expressions, as well as uh, GIFs from various cultural moments. Seeing this content helps the user understand that the searchable library of content is vast. Imagine somebody coming into trending and seeing a GIF from their favorite television show. That user now understands that there's GIFs to share from that show, from the characters that they know, and from the moments from that show that they enjoy. Categories takes common sentiments and makes them available for the user. And the terms that we tend to show in categories are ubiquitous search terms that we feel throughout the day as human beings. If you look at this particular image, you see categories like hug, smile, Congrats, excited. These are things that all of us have felt at least once, if not a couple of times, over the last few days. So the breadth of terms within categories helps demonstrate to a user how often expression search can enhance their communication throughout the day. So with respect to the principle of inspiring users to search, we encourage you to use trending GIFs or categories as a launch experience because it will inform users about the variety of content and motivate them to search for it later when they're in that moment. And the cherry on top is that categories is really easy to integrate. And I have a code sample here that demonstrates that. So once again, we have our API call at the top. And underneath, we have a response structure. And a category object is highlighted in blue. There's a couple of valuable things in this categories object, but I want to call attention to the image which is actually an animating cover photo for that particular category. And if you use categories, we encourage you to show that animating cover photo along with the category, because users are more likely to interact with it if there's an animating visual along with, a, along with the category. We also support localization. So if you pass in a language into this particular endpoint, you'll get back results that are translated into the supported language, which is huge if you have a product in developing markets. So the third principle that we talked about was helping navigate the nuances of expression. And as I mentioned before, expression search can sometimes be difficult. Figuring out the exact text query that articulates your emotion can be hard. I'll share a personal example to illustrate the quote. Um, something you should know about me is I love to watch YouTube videos of people doing eating challenges. Right? So one time I came across a video of a guy eating a six-pound, two-foot-long burrito, and he ate it in three minutes. It was absolutely miraculous. Amazing, amazing, amazing thing. So I sent this video to my friend, and I got a response that was something like, this isn't that hard. I could eat six pounds of food. I could do it no problem. And so I read that, and I put down my phone, and I said, what are you talking about? This makes absolutely no sense. I've seen this person struggle to eat a normal-sized burrito, but he's saying he could take down a six-pound burrito zilla. Right? I actually called them out on it, and I said, let's go to the place, and we can split the burrito three pounds each. I got no response, and fast forward months later, and we still haven't gone. So I'll let you draw conclusions about that particular story. But the reason that I bring it up is because we have to think about that emotion that I made after I read that, read that message. I kind of shrugged, and I scrunched up my face, and I said, what? And, and we have to think about, what is the search that articulates that particular expression. Is it shrug? Is it scrunched face? Is it you know, thinking face? It can be difficult to know in the moment exactly what to search for. So we've developed search suggestions to help with that problem 
and to help users articulate exactly what's on their minds. By definition, search suggestions takes a query and it returns terms that are related to that query and tuned around the expression use case. In the image here, you can see a query for smile, and you can see some search suggestions underneath, such as fake smile, evil smile, and big smile. You can see that those are all nuanced versions of smile, but they're valid sentiments on their own. If a user didn't know that they wanted to search for these search suggestions, Search suggestions would help them get to that emotion that they want. And that's why search suggestions is so powerful. It helps the user expand their vocabulary. It helps them express nuanced sentiments and ultimately helps them get to the perfect gift that they want to share more quickly. So let's look at one more code sample to help demonstrate the point. This is an API call for search suggestions, and we have a really simple response structure underneath that shows you the results that you would get for a query hungry. And I like this particular example because it makes me think of my sister. And、uh, my sister is the type of individual who she could be hungry, where she wants something to eat. She could be starving, where she could take down a six pound burrito zilla. And she could be hangry, where she's so hungry that it's in everybody's best interest to not interact with her until she's had something to eat. So you can see from these search suggestions that the expression that my sister would want to share in each of those moments is slightly different. And search suggestions would help her get to that perfect gift more quickly. So, one more thing that I want to mention outside of, the,、um, outside of the principles that I spoke to is content appropriateness. So, expression search can delight any user, regardless of who they are or their interests. And Tenor has built content filters to categorize that content and make sure that expression search is accessible to as many users as possible. When you're developing your experience, we encourage you to give the user the opportunity to configure their own content filters. And the reason that's important is because content appropriateness varies not only by the person sending the GIF, but also for the person receiving the GIF. Something that I might send to person A might not be appropriate to send to person B, but I want to engage in expression search for both of those conversations. So it's important to give the user the option to quickly switch back and forth. So, that they can continue to engage with expression search for as many users as possible. So, we've talked about how to build great expression search experiences into your product, specifically listing out principles that are common among those great experiences. If you follow these recommendations and follow these principles, it'll maximize the likelihood that users delight themselves and delight their recipients with this communication. To speak more to that delight, we've listed out a couple of user quotes here that we think embody the spirit of expression search. Integrating Tenor into your app helps users have a more lifelike conversation, communicate a better, clear message of what they see in their head, and express their true inner reactions with those around. Tenor's goal is to empower the three billion mobile users around the world to communicate visually, delight in that communication, And have the same sentiments that we've listed out on this slide. Our next step to reaching those three billion users is to increase, support, and nourish the expression search experiences that are available to them. And that's where you guys come in. We hope to help all of you build the best expression search experiences that you can possibly build. So to get started, all you need to do is go to tenor.com slash gif API, get a free API key. And you'll be ready to run expression search queries in a matter of minutes. There's tons of documentation on the site covering a range of topics, including everything that we spoke to here. So we encourage everyone to go check it out, start running some queries, and、uh, figure out how to build the best experience that you can build. And that wraps up our session. And we want to thank everyone for their time and attention.、Uh, we hope that you guys picked up on our excitement on the expression search use case. And we hope that you walk away feeling good about the expression search use case as well and motivated to build some really cool things. We'll be holding office hours shortly over in the office hours tent from 3 30 to 4 30. So we encourage everyone to come by, say hello, ask us questions, and、uh, we're excited to talk to you guys some more. Thanks and enjoy the rest of IO.